So this is what happens when the Vikings break news relatively late at night is that you get glasses, Andy. You get ready for bedtime, Andy, but whatever. Vikings sutured up the linebacker position, adding D. Marquise Gates, that's right, star of the XFL, also star of the, the defunct AAF. I mean, dude is just a stud wherever he goes. Uh, one year, $610,000 deal. Uh, Chris Thomason, uh, our guy Darren Doogie Wolfson, as well as Aaron Wilson, uh, were one of the first ones on it. So some background on the new Viking, uh, 24 years old, 6'2", 229-pound middle linebacker, uh, formerly of Ole Miss, uh, was also a three-star recruit uh, from Hampton, Georgia, uh, by way of Lovejoy High School, back in the day, class of 2014. Inked up with the aforementioned Ole Miss Rebels. I was teammates with Treadwell for a year, so... Chemistry? Yeah. Uh, he also received offers from Indiana Wake Forest as well as Kentucky. Also, I, I just find this cool. Like, if you look at majors, like, he majored in criminal justice, emphasis, and corrections. So, he, he, he's almost like Terry Tate off his linebackers. Like, mm, got corrected, son. That's right. Just laying out the justice. It could be marketing. Like, if he becomes a star, I need to get on uh, D. Marquise Gates' uh, marketing team. I'm in. Uh, was a three-year starter uh, with the Rebels, le- led them in tackles three straight seasons, uh, uh, was 76, 79, and 114 respectively, also led the SEC his senior season in solo tackles with 70. Now, when you're putting up tackle numbers and you- you're starting to infringe on and also break records uh, that used to belong to Patrick Willis, you're doing okay. You're pretty fine. You're going to be all right, right? Uh, no senior bowl, no combine invite at his pro day. He did run a 4 6 five, 40, uh, as well as uh, put up a 34-inch vert and a 10-foot, 5-inch broad jump. So testing numbers, not great. Also a little bit undersized is what it is. Honestly, uh, he reminds me a lot of Kentrell Brothers, who Kentrell Brothers, when he was coming out of Mizzou, a little bit slow, a little bit undersized for a middle linebacker, but just a guy who... Just got it. I mean, just great instincts for the ball and just got things done. And, you know, with the NFL, sometimes they certainly can be um, yeah, metric snobs. Like, oh, well, the defensive end has to be 6'5", and his arms have to be 35 inches and all that other stuff and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, they don't want you. I mean, some guys can just play football. And I, I think Gates certainly could be one of those guys. And, and also, uh, speaking of Kentra Brothers, I think that's the role that they envision him replacing, being that special teamer uh, as well as being a backup linebacker. So there you go. I uh, end up being undrafted in 2018 for those aforementioned reasons. Uh, was in camp with the Browns, but bricked off there. Uh, in the spring 2019, uh, signed up with the AAF Memphis Express. Not so much, uh, but also he did lead the lead in tackles with 58. So he, he was one of the, the few bright spots that come out of that defunct league. Uh, then was in camp with Washington this season. Now, I, I can't find a recorded preseason snap, so I'm not sure exactly if he got on the field with the Browns or Washington. I may be wrong, uh, but it doesn't uh, appear to be a case at this time. But he certainly got on the field uh, this spring, XFL with the Houston Roughnecks, the XFL champion. Houston Roughnecks, come on, come on. Uh, in five games, put up 32 tackles, two sacks, one pick, three broken up passes, forced a fumble, recovered three. Yeah, there's some sloppy football. <laughs> it's tough to watch. Uh, but also, he, he was just a tackling machine. It was one of the reasons why um, the Roughnecks' defense was very solid. It's one of the reasons why they were 5 now. Also, he was very good in the modified kickoff, which, frankly, I, I think should become the NFL rule here pretty soon. So he's got that going for him as well. And uh, I think he is going to have to play special teams anyways. And yeah, I understand. It's like, well, uh, uh, what about the big name signings? What about Clowney? All that stuff. I get it. Like stars on the team. Uh, they're kind of like bricks. Like you're building a house. The stars are the bricks. Uh, but guys like D, D Marquis Gates, they're the motor mortar. They're the ones that stick everything together. They're the ones that allow the stars, the bricks to shine. All right. So He's going to be at the bottom of the roster guy. He's going to play some special teams. Could be a little bit more than that down the line. Guys like this, especially on minimal salaries, hashtag Cap Smith, are, are extremely important. And I, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be really easy to root for. I mean, he, he's played in two different professional leagues. He has been a stud in both of them. Actually, one, one of the best linebackers in both leagues. He's more than held his own in the SEC West, you know, the biggest, baddest division of the biggest, baddest conference in all college football. So, I mean, don't write him off. I mean, don't think that, oh, he's just going to be a 90-man slappy. I mean, this is a guy, I mean, frankly, I would bet on him more than Cameron Smith, the fifth-round pick last year at USC. I, I, I really would. Uh, but uh, we shall see. Uh, we shall certainly see as the Vikings head into the draft and then training camp. If there is training camp, but we'll see. I- I'm rooting for DeMarquise Gates. You should, too. All right, your thoughts. Uh, Vikings inking up XFL star linebacker DeMarquise Gates. Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe for daily Vikings takes, as well as these sexy glasses that reflect everything. Yeah. Uh, as well as a give us a follow on social media as well. But the next time, Skull Production Value.